Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to God's house this morning. So glad to see all of you and staying warm. And uh, we are just thrilled to have you with us. Uh, this morning we're going to look at uh, the gospel reading. Uh, we're going to look at all of them, uh, looking at uh, the baptism of our Lord, uh, where Jesus makes his presence uh, known as baptized, uh, begins his ministry. Uh, but we notice that he has come and, and he is with us and, and a community and, and starting the story uh, of God's story. Uh, and so we're going to look at that, of just how we are part of, of God's story, uh, how we have become part of it uh, through our baptism, uh, just as Christ begins his ministry at, at baptism, and, and just how we are part of that, uh, and then get to share that with, uh, with the world. And so we invite you to uh, just join us in prayer uh, as we begin our service. Heavenly Father, we thank you for just another opportunity to be in your house, to, to grow in our faith and relationship with you. As we are surrounded by our brothers and sisters, we are reminded of, of your story, uh, how we are part of that story, uh, what our baptism means, uh, that we are, are forgiven. Uh, we are given that gift of eternal life uh, that your son has won for us. Uh, we have nothing to fear, for you are with us. Uh, and so just guide us as we worship and praise you this morning. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and greet those that are around you. We welcome all those that are online this morning. Welcome to worship this morning. And then we stay standing for our first hymn, All Who Believe and Are Baptized. Our beginning of the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With these words, you are baptized into Christ and given the new birth of water and of the Spirit. So shall we stand in faith without fear now and forever. Yet, even as God's people in the world, when we examine our hearts and our conscience, we find that we daily struggle against our weakness and sin that so easily besets us. Therefore, let us confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. God, our Father, though you have made us your own possession by our baptism into Christ, we will be able to live as your redeemed children in this fallen world. Therefore, we confess our sins and weaknesses to you and in repentance pray you of your mercy to forgive our sins and grant us your grace and strength. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
And the Lord be with you. And let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through Jesus, the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And so as we continue in our month of January, we're just reminded, especially today at the baptism of our Lord, uh, that because of Christ and because of our baptism, we are a new creation, that old has passed away and, and the new has come. And so let us uh, just be reminded of that uh, this month and let us say this twice this morning. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5.17 And one more time. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. The Old Testament reading for this baptism of our Lord Sunday comes from the book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And this is the word of the Lord. Be Our epistle reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the sixth chapter. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Looking out, there are more than just my family here, so I invite all children to come and join me for a children's message this morning. Alvin, you're off the hook this week, okay? <laughs> 
Good morning, everyone. How are we? Are we enjoying the new year? Yeah? Well, um, what do I have here? A calendar. And, and disregard that this is last year, so it's still good. It's still a calendar. And so what is the very first month? January. And, and so January 1st is called what? New Year's Day. And, and did anyone stay up till, till midnight to, to ring in the new year? Good for you. I did not. I went to bed. Because I had to get up at the crack of dawn to fly back here to the cold. But yeah, we, we celebrate that to, to start a, a new year. And some people make uh, New Year's resolutions, things that they're going to do differently. Um, because it's a new year, a new beginning. And so uh, today, you're going to hear a, a story uh, about when Jesus was, was baptized. And, and where do baptisms take place here? What, what, where do we go? What's over there? Yeah, the, the baptismal font. And, and so we are, are baptized there, and, and we are, are, are given a kind of new light. And, and Jesus was baptized and, and when, the, when Jesus was baptized, the heavens opened up, and, and God spoke and said, This is my beloved Son. I am well pleased uh, with Him. And, and so that's the same thing that happens to us. When we are baptized, God claims us as His own, and we are His. Uh, we are a new creation. Uh, so just like when the, the new year starts, we start a new year, and we are baptized, uh, we are given a new life. Uh, and, and with that life, we are given forgiveness, and we are given eternal life with, with God. And so each year when, when we start a new year, uh, you can kind of be reminded of your baptism. Uh, it's reminded that, that you are his, uh, he has claimed you, uh, and, and we get to go be with him one day. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for that gift uh, of baptism that you have claimed us as your own. We are yours, uh, and, and one day we will be with you. And so continue to guide us and point us to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for coming up. And so I invite you to stand if you are able. And let us say the verse together. Alleluia. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were in expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus was also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise we continue with our next hymn, God loved the world so that he gave.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has claimed us as his own, redeemed us. Be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. What makes a good story? Anyone? Okay. I was just going to try something new and see if people would, would, would answer. For, for me, it, it's a, a story, a good story is something that, that grabs your attention. It, it keeps you interested. It has good characters, a, a plot that, that makes you think. It keeps you guessing. It also is something that you just don't want to, to put down. It's, it's a page turner. I'm sure... All of you can think of a story or a book that you have read that is a good story, that, that fits those, those characteristics of a good story. How many of you think of God's Word, God's story, as a good story? One that you can't put down. It keeps you guessing. And this is exactly what is going on at the very beginning of our text for the gospel reading. Notice that the people that are seeing John baptized, people are wondering and thinking, is, is John the Christ, the one that has been promised to be that Messiah from so long ago? All the prophecies that have been made, is John the one? And, of course, John hears the, this commotion and, and tells them that, that, no, I am not the Christ. I'm just the one preparing people for the Messiah. For I just baptized you with water, but the one who is to come, who is mightier than I am, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, with fire. And he gives us that, that harvest, that, that farming analogy that John does a lot throughout his, his teaching. Where he will gather the, the, good, the, the good crops and those that are, that are bad will be thrown into the fire. But that is what Christ has come to do, to, to gather his people, God's people, and bring them home. And those that, that don't, that don't know God or, or refuse to believe in him, will pay that price. And then John continues his ministry. He is baptizing people. He is proclaiming the good news. And then Jesus comes among the people. And as I was reading this text today, I always imagine that, that John is, is there and, and he comes up to, to John privately and is baptized. But notice there is a whole bunch of people that are being baptized, and then Jesus is in line, I, I imagine, in, from this text. When he comes up, I think John realizes who Jesus is, and, and of course baptized him, and, and then Jesus gets down to pray, and then the heavens open up. And that voice begins by saying, this is my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. It's one of the, the climax points of God's story. It's the beginning of Christ's ministry. He's baptized. He doesn't need to be baptized because he is God's son. He is perfect. But he sets that precedent for us. That beginning of our ministry, our relationship with him. And so Christ is baptized. And we see that Christ was baptized to redeem his people. The main character of God's story is Jesus. And he makes his presence known here, the beginning with his baptism. He is finally here. All those prophecies that have been made throughout the Old Testament 
The main character has arrived. So when sin entered that world, this world, and God made that promise that he would send someone to crush the head of Satan, is now here, and he is God's son. He is well pleased with him. Now we see throughout the Old Testament that, that God's people had trouble keeping God's law. And God sent many prophets, many characters throughout his story to proclaim that message of repentance. And we see throughout this story that, that some hear his word and, and repent, and yet some hear it and, and refuse to listen. Some of them even killed those prophets. But through all of this, the people coming and going, God doesn't ignore his people. He keeps his promise. He is merciful. He is forgiving. And then finally, his, his son enters the world. It's time for the Christ to come. And again, it is announced that, that this is the Christ, not by angels like in the Christmas story that we just heard a couple weeks ago, but no, it's by God himself making known that this is the Messiah, the one that I have promised to bring to you. So his ministry begins. And so as I looked at this text, I am reminded that, that Christ comes and is among his people. He comes in the midst of a whole bunch of people being baptized. And there he is. Once again, reminding us of the importance of community, of being together. Christ's ministry is for each and every one of us to do it together. And one of these things in the, the story of God's, of God's story is, is the power of baptism. And baptism works forgiveness of sins. It, it rescues us from death and the devil and gives eternal salvation to all believers. It's a joyous celebration. Which is why I love doing baptisms. Sometimes I, I wish we could have a parade. Sometimes I wish that, that as Matt Anson's handed the, the trophy, confetti would fly out when we baptize kids. symbolize this, this wonderful gift that God has given to us. And I think we take advantage, we don't think too much of our, our baptism, of what it gives to us. And reading through some texts of Martin Luther this week, Martin Luther loved baptisms. He loved that, that gift that, that God had given to him. To know that, that daily he sins. And as we said that in our confession, daily we fail to live up to God's promises. Fail to keep God's law. And in our baptism, we're reminded that Christ has claimed us. As Paul reminds us in Romans, our, our old Adam has drowned to the sin. And we rise to newness of life. What a wonderful gift that is. And we were reminded from my passage in Isaiah. It's a popular one for, for funerals. To be reminded that we have been redeemed, that, that God has called us His. 
that he has called us by name. Which is why when we, we baptize infants and, and children and, and adults, we call them by name. Names are important. And God knows our names. And he has called us by that name. And we are his. We are precious in his sight. We are loved. And as Isaiah says, I will gather you. I will bring you together with me, with all believers. This is God's story. As you read throughout all of Scripture, it points to this fact that Jesus, the main character, is what his story is all about. What Jesus has done for the world. This free gift that he has given to each and every one of us. So that this body of sin that we have may no longer abound. It will be brought to nothing. So that we will no longer be enslaved to sin. But that we will be brought to that new life. God has plans for us. How many of you, when you read God's word, put yourself in that story? Because you should. You are part of God's story. He has plans for you most importantly, he has plans to bring you back to him, to be with him. And this is the best story that the world has ever heard or read. It's a story that needs to be told. We are his messengers. We get to proclaim this story to the world through our lives, through our actions, through our words, pointing people to him. Pointing people to know that they have been called by name. They are God's precious children. God's story has it all. Read it. It should be made into a, a movie and unfortunately, some parts aren't going to be rated G. But in this story, it points to Jesus. And as Christ began his ministry, as, as the heavens are opened up in our gospel reading this morning, and God speaks these words, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. He has come to do what is needed to be done, to redeem my creation. Follow him. Believe in him. And he will then bring you home to me. So let us, as we begin this new year, continue to point people to this story. The story, this amazing story that is for all people. And in this story, we're reminded of the love that God has for us. The love that Christ had for us as he redeems us. Continue to be part of that story. Celebrate your baptism. Celebrate your calling. be part of his family. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> we now continue by joining together and singing our next hymn, How Firm a Foundation. <laughs>
going to stand if you are able as we join together in confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we join together in the prayers of the church. Gracious and merciful God, as the heavens were opened at the baptism of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, so you have opened the very heavens to us as your baptized people. Give to us the confidence of faith and the power of your love that we may live as your children, even now amid the changes of this fallen world, ever rejoicing in your constant mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Grant your constant blessing upon your whole church. Give wisdom and confidence to all pastors and servants of your word and faithfulness and love to all your people that your truth may sound forth and prevail in our lives and through our service in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve our nation in the ways of righteousness and peace. Guide the leaders of all nations to pursue justice and peace. Guard and protect all who serve in the armed forces of our country and all who protect us in our land. Grant to all faithfulness in their service. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and help all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity, especially those in this congregation, for Tom, Dawn, Sarah, Lee, Wendy, Rodney, Karen, Chase, Barb, Donald, Joanne, Roger, Marlis, and Brian. Have mercy on all to whom death draws near and sustain and bless all who care for those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us so much to rejoice in, especially those who celebrate a birthday this week. For Reuben, Taylor, Olive, Lupita, Kyler, Brady, Lisa, Sandy, and Ralph. Lord, in your mercy. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. You may be seated as we offer up our offerings, uh, and if you did not place your offering in uh, when you came in, the offering plates are located at the exits. Uh, we also have online giving, uh, and so if you want to do that, uh, just go to our website and uh, fill that form out there to, to do electronic giving. Uh, and during this time, I just ask you to uh, focus in on our offering video. The new year is often a time of reflection. A chance to look back on the past 365 days and remember. Sometimes the memories bring a smile, and other times they break our hearts. Chances are you've experienced a bit of both this past year. The new year is also a time to look ahead, to imagine what could be, 
to scan the horizon with expectation and seek God's guiding hand. It's a time to strive for better, to live louder, love stronger, and be more of who God has created us to be. It's an opportunity for new beginnings, a chance to start fresh, to pursue God with a renewed passion, and to press on with all our hearts. The truth is, God has been faithful this past year, and that faithfulness promises to carry us through the next. As the new year begins, may we remember this one simple truth. In Christ, we are a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. Join together in praying the prayer the Lord has taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us join in saying our sending prayer. Be reminded uh, that all people are part of God's story, and we get to share that with the world. To be reminded that they are forgiven, that they have life with our Heavenly Father through Christ. And so as we say this, be reminded who you can tell this story to as we pray, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me. And may I ever do my part to win that soul for thee. And now receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We conclude with our final hymn, All Christians Who Have Been Baptized. We see that for just a couple announcements. Just a couple things to draw your attention to. Our annual uh, meeting, congregational meeting, will be on January 20th, uh, following uh, Sunday school and uh, Bible study. Uh, so come and join us for that as we kind of uh, discuss what happened this past year uh, and what we are planning uh, to do in the the coming year. Uh, also, uh, join us for uh, our. Adult Bible study. We have two of them. Uh, Lynn's going to talk about one in just a sec. 
Uh, but uh, one that will be in the fellowship hall is uh, titled uh, Tensions Between Faith and Culture. Uh, so as we look at how the world is living and how we should live, uh, how we can follow the, the model that Christ has given to us uh, to live out our callings and vocations uh, in this world. So come and join us uh, for that. Uh, and then uh, we have another Bible study that we're going to be offering uh, this year as well. Um, we're going to do a Bible study on the book of Romans. If you are someone that has never, ever in your life been to a Bible study, or maybe you're someone who, like Alvin, who has probably studied his Bible since he was three years old, this Bible study is for you. Um, does, you don't have to know anything about the Bible. You don't have to be worried that you're going to be asked a question, put on the spot, asked to read, anything like that. We're going to delve into Romans almost verse by verse. So if you really want to learn, and I know Pastor's study last week was about getting into our Bible in, in the year 2020. No, 2022. We can go you, back in time, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have two Bible studies to choose from, and I don't want you to think, oh, gosh, Lynn knows so much about the Bible, or Bob knows so much about the Bible. I know nothing, so I'm really intimidated by that. Don't be. I think Pastor's goal, and I know I have a big passion for just getting people to really love reading the Bible. And if you want to talk to anyone who didn't read their Bible for years and is so passionate about reading it now, and all of a sudden one day it just clicked, talk to my daughter-in-law, Shayla. I'm so excited because one day it literally clicked, and she cannot get enough of the Bible. And I just really desire that for everybody here. So even though it's not a contest between his study and mine, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Pastor. <laughs> Go to her. <laughs> no, I just encourage you to attend one. I know a lot of times we go to fellowship, we go home. Why not just stay another half hour? If you have to leave early, leave. If you don't make it to every single Sunday to go to Bible study, that's okay because you'll learn something each time you come, whether you start in the middle. So please pray about it, think about it, but really make 20, 22, that you get into the Bible. Amen. So Lynn's study will be meeting in the room across from my office upstairs. So if you want to join her for that. Do you have more? No. Probably. Okay. I have a few things to tell you about. Um, we are going to be hosting a Valentine's dinner on Friday, February 11th um, from 530 to 830. You can sign up for one hour reservations. Um, so we'll serve you a delicious dinner. Um, this is a fundraiser for our National Youth Gathering crew. Um, there will be child care provided and um, kids meals. So come enjoy um, some time um, with us. We are starting, um, we were going to start our women's Bible study this last Wednesday, but because the weather had other plans, we will be starting this week. Um, so all women are invited to join us either at 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. Um, our study is called all my friends have issues, and the main point of it is um, we all think that sometimes we have so many issues, and the truth is we all have issues, so you're not the only one. Um, so join us for that. Youth group, we are meeting next Monday, um, February 17th from 12 to 3. We're going to work on some service projects and then just play some games. Um, so you don't have school that day, so come and join me here at church. And then also um, grab a bulletin. There is a thank you from one of our Angel Tree families. Um, to you, it might have been just buying one more gift, but to these families, it was really life-changing. So thank you for your generosity. Are you going to read it? I think it's fabulous. I think you should read it. Okay. Um, so from the Angel Tree, uh, this, this is why we, we do this. I just wanted to thank everyone who helped give my children a Christmas this year. The food pantry has also been a blessing for us. What all you do does not go unnoticed by my family. Thank you for everything. Uh, and so this is why we, we do this, to, to share the, the love and, and to give hope uh, for people that um, need that during this time, uh, and especially with our food pantry uh, and, and our angel tree and any way that we can help uh, those in need. Uh, that's what the church is about, um, and so we continue to do that. Uh, also, my, my one last thing. Uh, we were supposed to have kind of some photos taken today, uh, but not many people signed up for that. So we're going to uh, push that back. So February 20th, we will have uh, slots open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, so if you didn't get your picture taken uh, during uh, December when we had that offered, uh, this is still a free opportunity for you to come and get uh, some pictures taken uh, here. And we'll also use those for our upcoming new directory. Uh, so 
uh, a link uh, is there in, on, the, web, uh, on the, the bulletin. I will also send an email out uh, this week uh, that you can click on and, and sign up for that. Uh, so that is all that I have. Blessings on your day. Um, and come and join us for, for Bible study as we continue to, to dive into God's word and to grow in our faith uh, and, and learn more about him and the story that he has for us. And so blessings on your day and God's peace.